Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach, episode number 40. Today, we're going to be talking all about how you can create amazing professional development opportunities for your teachers using Microsoft Teams and Microsoft OneNote. We have two great MIE trainers that's Microsoft Innovative Educator Trainers on today to talk about how they're using Microsoft products in their school for professional development and what they've been working on at some of the big conferences that we've been discussing here on the show. Of course, there are several great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this and all of the shows on the TeacherCast Educational Network. You can find more information on our website, askthetechcoach.com, where you can find great blogs, all of our podcasts, and a chance to join in our Ask the Tech Coach Mastermind, where right now we are offering three great promo codes, and you guys can get up to $150 off your subscription to our Technology Coach Mastermind. If you're a tech coach, it is a perfect opportunity for you. And if you're looking to become a tech coach, it's an even better opportunity. Check it out over on teachercast.net slash mastermind. That's teachercast.net slash mastermind today. We would love to have you part of the TeacherCast Educational Technology Coaches Network. And one more time, thank you guys for joining us. My name is Jeff Bradbury. I am a technology coach in a K-12 school district, and I am so excited to have you guys here. This is Ask the Tech Coach. We are a show that drops every single Monday, and you can find us everywhere that podcasts are. I want to bring in our guests for the evening. I want to bring on Miss Jenny Long and Salee Clark. Jenny and Salee, how are you tonight? Welcome to the program. We're great. Thank you for having us. It is so great to have you guys here. Of course, you and I met uh, recently at the FETC conference. We've been talking a lot about FETC here on the program. Jenny, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I am an instructional technologist with Eagle Mountain Saginaw Independent School District, which is a little bit north of Fort Worth. And uh, Celine and I work together very closely. She is my right-hand lady. And I. this is my 20th year in education. Um, I have a degree in elementary reading and I have taught math uh, previously and I have been a um, ELA curriculum specialist and also a science curriculum specialist. But the last 10 years I have been working as an instructional technologist. Thank you so much for joining us. Salee Clark, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, hello, my name is Salee Clark, and I am an instructional technologist at Eagle Mountain Saginaw ISD with Ginny, and this is my 14th year in education, and I absolutely love doing instructional technology, not instructional technology. I started out as a pre-K teacher, general ed and special ed, and loved that time, but then transitioned into becoming a librarian and got my master's of instructional technology, and I have now transitioned into that role. So I've really enjoyed it. And as Jenny mentioned, we complete each other's brains, I think. Uh, So it's really fun working with her. (laughs) You guys have a pretty amazing YouTube channel. Tell us a little bit about the the thing you guys have going on together because you have created an amazing educational brand. That's awesome. Thanks. We, um, you know, we're just real. We're just who we are and we have fun in our jobs and We know we were looking for ways to reach teachers where they are, and we knew that if one teacher had a question, then other teachers had that same question. They just weren't reaching out and asking it. And so we started off just answering teachers' questions and finding solutions to problems and then just sharing it. And we're just real in who we are and share what's going on. It might be a little silly. (laughs) <laughs> uh, silly silly is always welcome here on the show you can of course find out more information by going over to youtube.com forward slash jenna lee that's youtube.com forward slash jenna lee of course if you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask the tech coach we welcome you to it over on twitter at ask the tech coach or leave us a voice message over at teachercast.net slash voicemail now I am so excited to have you guys on the show today to talk about some of the great things that are happening in the Microsoft education community. We're going to be talking a little bit later about the fantastic MIE program that we are all a part of. And we're going to tell you guys about an opportunity that you guys are going to have coming up here uh, right around the corner, actually, in early April to actually become a Microsoft Innovative Educator. So stick around for that. 
But I am so excited to announce a new project that the three of us have going on together to actually help you out there learn a little bit more about Microsoft Teams, learn a little bit about more about Microsoft OneNote, and to help you as the tech coach create great professional development using all the Office tools. Um, Jenny, talk to us a little bit about Microsoft Teams. It's one of the newer applications. I know a lot of people are still kind of getting their feet wet on it. What is it? What does it do? But I got to tell you, it's one of the most powerful applications I have ever, ever tried. What is Microsoft Teams? Well, um, Teams is actually a platform in the Microsoft suite that is a great way to stay organized. You can connect with others. Um, it offers great collaboration and just a great platform for learning. Uh, we have used it. Um, we're just really starting more this past this past you know few months, but um, we have used it in the past for PD that we have been to as a participant. So the more and more that we've used it, we've really fallen in love with it. And it it really has some aspects of an LMS. It has some assignments and rubrics, speed grader, but it offers so much with all the pieces that you can bring in to it. You can add in Flipgrid and different app integration, um, Skype, there's just, it's unlimited, but um, there's just a lot that you can do with it. And we've, we've really had fun exploring it. Now I got to ask this question because we work a lot here on the Ask the Tech Coach podcast all about learning management systems. We've been diving into so many of them. And recently we did an entire show all around creating online learning modules and and what exactly does online PD look like? So I'm going to ask you guys the tough question here. Is Teams a learning management system? I would actually say it's so much more. So it offers a lot of the same aspects as a learning management system. It has, like Jenny mentioned, the speed grader. It has assignments. It has places for your students to show their work. But the more we've been in it, the more we found it really is like the mecca of collaboration uh, where everyone can come together and collaborate and create together, explore information together. Um, it really is so much more than what we have seen traditional LMSs do. You seem a little excited. Tell me a little bit about what Microsoft Teams is doing for you. Oh, let me tell you, because it's <laughs> I don't know if we have enough time for this. I know. I get really excited. Okay, so first off, we started with um, some school-to-school -school collaboration. We have 26 schools in our district, and we went to two elementary schools and collaborated across two fifth-grade classrooms. So the students got to create a story together about a water droplet's um, journey through the water cycle. And so one of our other team members actually planned this lesson and I got to come and help him create it within teams and present it to the kids. Oh my goodness. It was so amazing. The students researched together. They Skyped the other classroom. They were chatting with each other in the chat window and feet in the chat feature. And um, you got to see so much thinking happen and debate and justification. The kids had to justify why they thought, precipitation went before runoff or, you know, all the different steps. And it was truly just amazing to see them have to think through those processes. And they got to collaborate with kids they had never even met before um, within our district. So it was a great opportunity. Then we took it another step forward. Okay. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. <laughs> then we took it again and we had students create poetry together from two different schools. So they had to use the chat feature to communicate with each other to create poems. Uh, but now this week we have actually been collaborating with a class from France. So Ginny and I, as you mentioned, and you two are part of the MIE community, which we love. And this year, Ginny really encouraged us to do Skypeathon. And we dove in and we loved it. And we met so many people from around the world. And one of our friends we met is named is Arnaud from France. And he has a third or fourth grade class in Southern France. And so our students are actually studying ecosystems together. So we're looking at an ecosystem in France and an ecosystem here in Texas. And we are comparing them and actually studying what would happen if endangered species within our ecosystem went extinct. So it's a great way for our students to have a global connection and uh, truly understand an ecosystem from someone else's point of view. I, I love the fact that you're describing Microsoft Teams not as something as what a teacher uses, but something that a student uses. 
Oh my goodness. Like I said, it really is the Mecca of collaboration. Like you get in and the students take control of their learning. Uh, and it really gives you all of those facets for students to do that, where the teacher really is the facilitator. They get to set it up and then let the students learn. Now, now Jenny, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but do you have a, a story that's even close to being that awesome? She was with me the whole time. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Yeah, like we have the same story. <laughs> talk, talk to us a little bit about this, right? Because as a non-Microsoft Office user, you don't have access to Teams, right? Teams is just one of those applications that you get if you are an EDU subscriber or uh, a Microsoft business user, right? Like the, the average person doesn't have access to see the mecca of collaboration right here. Um, how do you how do you find teams? How do you log in? What does a student need? How does all the back end stuff work here? And 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 I'll even go a step further and say, what does it take to set up teams for the first time for your classroom? Well, to access uh, Microsoft Teams, you can use your Office 365 portal. And that's how we have our students get in. They sign into their 365 account and then they um, can join with a code. So we give them a specific code and they just put that code in and they can join. So for our students that have access to Office 365, it's very simple for them to join. But in the situation like Celie was describing with our friend in France, um, they did not have that access. So we actually allowed them to join with a guest access. And that's very, very important for people that don't have the 365 for subscription. They can join with guest access. Now you do have to turn that on in the on the back side of Microsoft Teams. So an administrator will have to go in and there's a toggle button that they will have to click that says guest access is enabled. Now when we're looking at all of this, I love the idea that you can put really anything in here. I I I know we're going to start and a few moments here to talk about OneNote and how awesome OneNote is as far as you can put a bunch of stuff in here. But Teams really takes it a step further because you can put OneNote inside of Teams. You can do full collaboration in Teams. You can do conversations in Teams. You can add files in Teams. You can Flipgrid in Teams. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in Teams. How does a teacher start to unpack the unlimited power of the mecca of, of communication here? <laughs> Because that's, that's a big thing. Like, that's why we're going to be working together over the next few weeks here to create a, a how to do Teams video series here. How does somebody look at this and go, all right, let's not get overwhelmed. Let's put all this stuff together. Where do you start? Well, I think it can be very overwhelming. I know that we as participants, when we were going through some, some sessions last year, that was kind of my hesitation at first. I was like, this seems like so much that I was having a hard time really understanding it piece by piece. So I think the more and more that we've been exposed to it and we've seen how we can turn around and use it with our teachers and students, it's starting to make more sense. But I think starting simple is also important too, because it can be so much that it can be overwhelming. Yeah. One of the things we do with our teachers a lot is we just tell them to choose one app and own that app. And it really takes away a lot of that frustration and overwhelmed feeling. And I think the same for teens. Look at the look at teams and look at one aspect that you feel comfortable with and own that one aspect. So for Ginny and I, we love OneNote and it's comfortable for us. So that's where we started in Teams. We opened up a OneNote and we started using it in Teams. And then once we got comfortable with that, we added another aspect. So then we were like, okay, what else? Oh, we love Flipgrid. Let's add our Flipgrid aspect to it. So I think just taking it in small chunks uh, really helps understand all the capabilities that it really does have. Now you called it a learning management system. You and and really when we're looking at different learning management systems, one of the advantages that you can have as a tech coach is that you can create different scenarios where your teachers can learn from it or through it. So I got to ask you here, how can we use Microsoft Teams in a professional development situation or in a year round PD? Can you make online courses with it? Can you set up uh, various uh, badging and, and, and micro credentials? How, how would you use it as a professional development tool if you were a tech coach? Well, um, you mentioned it being an LMS, but like I said before, it is so much more I don't even like that term. I think we need to come up with a new coined phrase for it. I don't know what it would be, but something awesome. Uh, but we, uh, like Jenny and I have been at FETC, like you mentioned. And one of the things we found at FETC is that tech coaches 
like us, we're dying for PLN time and places for resources. So mm-hmm. one of the things Jenny and I have begun creating is a Teams PLN for tech coaches and techie teachers who are looking for um, different ways to use technology within their classroom and encourage others to use it. Um, and so we've created a team um, where people can come in, throw in, it's really community source where everyone can add in the things that they are using and the things they found successful. And then once a month, we hope to have a Skype call with everyone jumping in and hopefully have experts like uh, you, Jeff, on the show to uh, share how you are using different uh, technologies in your school. I love the idea of using it as a global uh, PLN or PLC, a, a global place for you to put things in, especially to share resources. It's so easy to do that, isn't it? Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's it really is great. And one of the things we really like about it is one of the things we found when digging in. I'm going to get a little nerdy here, but the files actually live in SharePoint. So one of the things we've come across within our district is people will share different documents and then they'll leave the district and their accounts get turned off. And then those documents get locked or lost or we can't have access to them. But living in SharePoint, they're always there in that SharePoint, in that spot. And so everyone always has access to it. Now, you might be out there saying, hey, I'm a tech coach and I would like to join this global Teams PLN. Um, we have all of the links available here. This is Ask the Tech Coach episode number 40. You can go over to askthetechcoach.com and search for everything in our archives. We have the uh, link here to the Microsoft uh, form for you. And... Um, what can tech coaches expect when they uh, fill out the form here? How does your how does the PLN actually work here? Well, when they join, we're going to um, notify them and um, give them access to get into the team, and we'll ha- get their information through the form that they fill out. And then in the team, um, there are some channels. Um, there's you know resources and ideas, and um, they can also add channels as well for topics that they want to discuss. In addition, we've also incorporated, of course, our one of our favorite apps, Flipgrid, so that way they can leave video responses and communicate with each other. And then once a month, we hope to hold a Skype call and uh, feature experts um, sharing all of their knowledge with us. We, of course, look forward to joining everybody and seeing everybody in that Microsoft Teams. I am so excited about all the great stuff that's happening in professional development world for tech coaches. And we want you to be a part of everything over at askthetechcoach.com. Of course, all the links are going to be over here on Ask the Tech Coach podcast episode number 40. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for checking out today's program. I wanted to take a moment today to talk to you about my friends, at Student Treasures. You see, Student Treasures has been turning students into published authors for more than 20 years. They've been providing everything that you need to turn your class into published authors, and they do it for free. Student Treasures free publishing kit makes it easy, and this hands-on writing activity motivates your students to write and inspires them to learn by turning their writing and illustrations into a -a one-of-a-kind book. Creating a class book promotes student collaboration, builds self-esteem, and is an easy way to incorporate all of the educational standards. So you see, when you turn your students into published authors, you'll automatically receive a free teacher's copy of your class's book, along with any copies ordered by their parents. Nothing will motivate your students more than seeing their work come to life in a real book. But don't take our word for it. More than 440,000 teachers have turned over 14 million students into published authors with Student Treasures. You don't want to miss the looks on their faces when they see their works come to life in a professionally bound book. They'll love looking back on this treasured keepsake for years to come. Learn more about publishing and turn your class into proud authors at studenttreasures.com forward slash teachercast. And we're back today talking to Jenny and Salee, otherwise known as Jenny Lee. Uh, Tell us a little bit about how did you guys come together as a group? Where where did the name Jenny Lee come from? And when we do visit your stuff, what kind of uh, activities and stuff uh, do you guys enjoy presenting? Obviously, we we met each other at at FETC. What do you guys like to present on? We we coined the term just because we joined our names and we we do kind of a little joke in our office all the time. We try to join all of our um, team members' names, so it's kind of fun. But 
Jenny and Salee. So we came up with Jenna Lee. And we love to present on just things that we enjoy, tools that our teachers are using, um, new new things that are coming out in the ed tech world, um, things that are just near and dear to us and that we're passionate about. We definitely both are passionate about accessibility, um, you know, in, in making learning accessible for all. So that's probably our number one. But um, we love to just share with others and, and network and, and grow our PLN and, and encourage um, our other teachers to do that as well. So would you say that you two together are becoming a mecca of collaboration amongst yourselves? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> we, and, um, we laugh because we really do um, compliment each other a lot. Um, I, I'm kind of all over the place, ADHD, but come up with all kinds of good ideas. And Jenny keeps us all organized and helps us make sure that we complete our task and get everything done that needs to happen. So we, we uh, really do make a great team. And, and that is so important. You know, we talk a lot here on the podcast about being a tech coach in a school district where it's just you or being the only tech coach in a district among multiple buildings. But it's also important that we recognize that there are many times where tech coaches are working together or you do have two in a district, two in a building, all those different things. And being able to create and collaborate and put things together in a in a way that's not only going to you know make the day go by a little bit quicker, but also be beneficial to your teachers. And that is why I'm excited to talk a little bit about how you guys are using OneNote to help create great professional development. Now, for those who might be unaware, uh, what is what is OneNote? Because uh, it's, it's been around a while. It's so versatile. I love using it. But uh, Jenny, let me ask you, um, we heard your definition of Teams. What's your definition of Microsoft OneNote? <laughs> well, OneNote is just basically a digital one-stop shop for everything. Um, you can basically, it's a three-ring binder digitally. So we kind of say back in the olden days when we had our trapper keeper and you could, you know, put your papers in your trappers and carry around that binder, you could only fill it so much. But with a OneNote, you can fill that notebook up with videos and audio files and links and images and just just anything you can possibly imagine you can embed things in there and and build it out i mean there's like there's no limit so i've been using OneNote for over 10 years and it's just really life changing so we I love to share all about OneNote now what can you do with OneNote i know that OneNote is a uh, a great note-taking application. I know you can add uh, graphics in there. I know you can link to anything. I know a lot of my show notes get done in OneNote. Um, I know that when you're on a Surface tablet, you've got a pen and you can draw everything. And I know that my five-year-olds really love using those pens and tools. And I've been using OneNote for the last couple of years to teach them how to read and to teach them how to write and to teach them how to draw things. And I've got a OneNote that is filled with drawings from my five-year-old, four-year-old, and three-year-old over the last couple of years that I will never, ever get rid of. And it's amazing. That's uh -huh. why I like OneNote. But, uh, Silly, why do you like OneNote? Oh, my goodness. Being the way I am, I totally need something to keep me organized. If it's on paper, I will lose it. I will put it in a drawer, put it in my car. I don't know. It will be gone. But with OneNote, no matter what, it is digital, it's organized, it's easy to manipulate and use. I can take pictures of things and send it into OneNote. I can use Office Lens to do that as well. It really is amazing. But more than that, like Jenny mentioned before, we are huge fans of accessibility and it has changed my family's life. Uh, my son has dyslexia and so he uses OneNote uh, the immersive reader feature and the dictation feature mm. uh, daily at school and at home. And it has really changed uh, the way we view content and accessing content. So it has been um, huge in our home. You know, Microsoft talks a lot about things like immersive reader. They talk a lot about the accessibility features. Yet whenever I speak with other tech coaches, it's not a topic that's widely understood. Could you talk a little bit about what some of these words are that we were just mentioning? What is Immersive Reader? Yeah, Immersive Reader will actually read pretty much anything on the screen on in OneNote, in Word, in PowerPoint. It's, a, it's almost in everything that, 
Microsoft makes. It's an edge. It will even read websites. Uh, but anything that is typed, it will read. Any PDF, it will read. It will even read images sent in from um, Office Lens. Uh, and you can, and it's not just reading it. It takes it to like a whole nother level. Uh, it has colored backgrounds where you can have different colored backgrounds or overlays. You can speed it up, slow it down, change the font, change the spacing. And one of the newest features that Jenny and I are in love with is the picture dictionary, especially mm. thinking about kiddos with dyslexia who struggle with vocabulary, especially academic vocabulary. This gives them the opportunity to click on a word and see it and understand what it means. And then just recently, they've now added in translation or, I tra or um, translate.it where you can even have things translated. So if you think about your ELL language learners, oh my goodness, what a great way to empower them to actually understand what you are presenting and what content you're giving in your class. A couple of the other newest additions uh, recently has been Flipgrid is now um, a Microsoft product. And so Immersive Reader is also available in Flipgrid. So the topics, the students can just click the little speaker button and it will be read um, out loud orally for the students. So that's awesome. And also um, Ink to Math. So the, the math problems can also be read to the students step by step. So that's huge for math teachers as well. You know, there's so much out there for teachers. It can get overwhelming sometimes. And it and again, if you're looking for information on any of this stuff, we're gonna throw a couple links in our in our show notes doc here for this. But you know, one of the best places to go for this to learn about how you can bring these different products in, in a professional development is the Microsoft education portal. You can find all the links over at education.microsoft.com. I know you guys are frequent uh, visitors of the education platform. And I wanted to kind of wrap up today by talking a little bit about the Microsoft education team, what it takes to be an MIE. What is the MIE program doing worldwide for not only just for, for staff developers, but for teachers, administrators, the whole deal. But, but let me kind of start with this. Um, Jenny, how long have you been a member of the Microsoft EDU family? Well, um, this is my third year actually to be an MIE. And then um, last year, Selena and I actually and a few other members on our team, we became, this is our second year to be an expert and also trainers. So you can actually self-apply so, or self-nominate yourself on the website and there is a place on there where there's a few, three different steps that you have to do, but you have to have a minimum of a thousand points. And that's very easy to obtain just by creating your account. You already get 500 points and then you can take various courses. You can go to um, and listen to other people present and get codes and redeem different codes. And once you have a thousand points, you just create a sway and talk about how you're going to use Microsoft products in your job and maybe you know share some examples of that. And once you submit your sway in your application between April fifteenth and July fifteenth, they will announce the um, people that were accepted in August. And it's just a great community to be a part of. We have met so many people, so many opportunities at becoming an MIE. We are going to be um, attending We Day um, here in the next few months, and We Day is an uh, awesome um, time where we come together with students and other educators and just really celebrate um, the not me but we as students you know make a global connection across the world so just so many opportunities for us we have just grown our PLN and and um, taken part in many of the opportunities through the website that is offered us so it, it's very clear to me that this has been a big impact on your um, community, on your PLN, on, on, on your profession here. What does being a part of the MIE program mean to you? Well, to me, it really does mean community. Um, we have met so many different people through Skypeathon and through our MIE events and MIE summits um, at different conferences we've gone to at We Day, like Jenny mentioned, and then online. And not only that, we also are very active on Twitter. And so we communicate with them on Twitter and we feel like family with each other. Um, we understand what each other's going through. We share ideas. We encourage each other. And then to meet in real life, it, it's almost like a, a family reunion. Uh, you know, we get to run and hug and we're like, we feel like we know you. We've known you for years. Um, but it really is a great way for 
you to do PD all the time or on your own when you want. Uh, you know, a lot of times Jenny and I are at home on the couch uh, and just chilling and looking at the MIE to find, looking at the MEC, MEC to find lessons or going through lessons and learning different things or even on Twitter with our friends from the MEC and uh, seeing what they're doing, communicating in edge hats. It really is a great way to get connected with a community. You know, there are literally thousands of MIEs out there. And then, of course, if you take that step, you can become an MIEE. And, and so the question, of course, then becomes, how do you do this? And as, as Jenny had mentioned, the application process is very, very simple. You go over to, to education.microsoft.com, sign up for an account, um, earn your points, create a sway. And a sway, uh, uh, Sully, how would you describe a sway to somebody? Oh my goodness. I would say <laughs> <laughs> I would say it is, I know my friends make fun of me for this, but I would say it's a PowerPoint on steroids. It is the mecca of PowerPoints. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is a it creates a beautiful website style presentation. Um, so easy to make. You just put in your content, it automatically grabs pictures for you, even if you search yourself, because I've done that before. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, you can quickly add them in. You can add videos. It even does creative comments. So you can always make sure that you're following copyright law and we'll even cite your sources for you if you want. Um, but it does make it pretty. So it takes out all of that work that uh, PowerPoint um, requires. So it really is a great tool. So we've got Sways that we're talking about. We've got Microsoft OneNote we're talking about. We've got Immersive Reader we're talking about. We've got Microsoft Teams. There's so many great things over there. Guys, where is a good place to go to learn about all of this stuff and start to unpack some of the topics that we've done? Because so many coaches out there are still in that overwhelmed stage of I've got this, but I also have to train on all of these things. Where is a, a, if you can give them one place to go uh, uh, other than ask the tech coach dot com. If you can give them <laughs> one place to go for all of this stuff, where would you guys recommend a tech coach go directly after listening to this podcast? Well, of course, the Microsoft site, but we recently created a OneNote to share for this very purpose. Um, as we are presenting and as we are sharing things, we, we kept sharing individual links and we were like, why are we not just putting it all in one big notebook? So we have a notebook called, um, I think the, the address is emsisd.com slash generally. And in that notebook, we have multiple sections on various Microsoft tools also, just other ed tech uh, tools that teachers will find valuable to use in their classroom, um, ways they can join the Microsoft community. And of course, our YouTube show link is in there. But we wanted to compile just all of the great things that we share with teachers into one place for that very purpose. And we will definitely make sure that we have all the links to that in our show notes. There is a spot. Again, this is Ask the Tech Coach episode number 40. Um, you can find all the details over at askthetechcoach.com. Look in our archives there. There is a section on our blog post that says explore these resources. I'm going to make sure that all of these great things get written down and linked to so you have one podcast to go to to share this out with your friends. And I hope you guys are doing that. Um, we, of course, are here every single Monday. Nick and I are doing our best to provide a great resource for the tech coaching community. If you are a tech coach, we would love to have you guys on our show. At the end of every single month, we do a roundtable episode where we bring on tech coaches from around the world. Yes, I did say around the world. And we uh, we discussed these topics. So we would love to have you guys be a part of our next Tech Coach Roundtable. We record them in the middle of the month, put them out at the end of the month. And we are here for you guys every single Monday morning, starting at 6 a.m. Eastern. We drop it every single Monday. So check us out over at askthetechcoach.com. We would love to have you guys be part of our PLN. And Jenny and Sully, I want to say thank you guys so much for coming on here and sharing your passions, not only for professional learning, but for all the great stuff happening over at Microsoft EDU. Jenny, where can we learn more about the great things happening in your network? Well, you can definitely follow me on Twitter. It's at JLo731. And definitely check out our YouTube show. You can find more information about that over at youtube.com slash Jenna Lee. That's youtube.com forward slash J-E-N-A-L-L-E-E. -E. And Salee, where can we find more about the great things that you're doing? On Twitter as well, at Salee Clark, which is S-A-L-L-E-E-C-L-A-R-K. And like Jenny mentioned, of course, come subscribe to our YouTube show. 
And of course, I can't recommend that stuff enough. When I saw Jenny and Silly, or Jenny, present at FETC this year, I knew I had to bring them onto the show to share them with you guys. And I am so excited to have them. And one more time, we are actually going to be working throughout the next few months to put together a great uh, video series um, on how to actually use Microsoft Teams um, with your teachers for professional development. We're going to be doing some deep dive into these very applications. So uh, check out our, our YouTube channel channel over on teachercast.net slash YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. You never know what pops out of TeacherCast these days. We've got some great things happening as it is the beginning of March. We celebrate every single year our friends over at Microsoft March. Look for some great Microsoft content coming out this month all about Microsoft and the Microsoft Education Program. And one last time, don't forget the applications to be an MIE are coming out on April 15th, but they're not here forever. April 15th to July 15th is the is the window to become an MIE. Check it out. It is one of the best, if not the best, professional learning community out there. I've been a proud MIE for the last five or six years now. It has been absolutely an amazing experience to be a part of the MIE family and to meet people like Jenna, Jenny, I knew I was going to do that. Jenny and Salee. So one more time, I want to say thank you guys out there for being a part of this. Checking out our podcast, you can check out all the other great stuff over on teachercast.net, where we've got podcasts, blogs, online courses, and so much more. And don't forget our brand new website that we just launched, podcastingwithstudents.com, where you can learn how to bring audio and video into your classroom. Guys, one last time, I want to say thank you guys for being here. And on behalf of everybody here in the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students. <laughs>